Hi friends, welcome to Ashok IT. This is Ashok. In this video, we will discuss about arrays in Java. Alright, let's get started. As part of this video, we are going to understand what is array, why we need to go for arrays concept, how to create an array, how to initialize an array, how to traverse array, how many types of arrays available, and what are the coding challenges with respect to arrays? All right. First, let's understand the introduction part. In any programming language, if we want to store the data, then we will use variables. Variables are used to store the data. If I want to store one value, then I will take one variable, like int a is equal to 10. If I want to store another value, then I need to take another variable, like int b is equal to 20. If I want to store third value, then I need to take third variable. One variable is used to store one value. For example, if I want to store 10,000 values, then we need to take 10,000 variables. Writing 10,000 variables inside the program is not at all recommended. It's not a good programming practice because it will decrease readability of the program. That's where arrays comes into picture. If you want to store multiple values, then you need to take multiple variables to store those values. If you store 10,000 values using 10,000 variables, your program readability will be decreased. That's why we will take array. Array is used to store multiple values. By using array's concept, we can store multiple values into single variable. Understood? What is array? Array is a reference to data type. Array is used to store multiple values. Array will store the data based on the indexes. For example, if you want to store 10 values, 10 values you can store into single variable by using array concept. Now, array will maintain the data based on indexes. Array index always will start from 0th position. So we can say array is a container which is used to store collection of elements with the same data type. Suppose if you want to store integer values, we will create integer array. If you want to store decimal values, we will create decimal array. If you want to create a string values, then we can create string array. So array is a container which is used to store collection of elements with the same type. If you want to store 10,000 values, you no need to create 10,000 variables now. You create one array. In that array, you can store 10,000 values also. All right. Then next question, how to create an array? We need to follow some syntax in order to create that array. First, array declaration. What type of data you want to store? You specify that by using data type and that braces represents that it is the array type. Data type, variable name. Then array creation, declaration plus creation. So what is the size? How many values you want to store in the array? You need to specify that at the time of creating the array. Array declaration and array creation. Instead of doing that in two lines, we can combine that into single line also. Declaration plus creation in the single line. Data type, variable name is equal to new data type. New is a keyword which is used to create an array object. And here we are giving size. That size represents how many objects or how many values we want to store into that array. Alright, example, if I am taking integer array is equal to new int of 4. Here int represents data type, arr represents name of the variable and new is a keyword and 4 represents size. That means I want to create array with 4 size. Array with 4 size means I want to store 4 values. 4 indexes will be created. Array will maintain the data based on the indexes. Array index will start from 0th position. Array index start from 0. The last index of the array is always size minus 1. Here I have given size as a 4. So the last index is 4 minus 1 that is 3. Array is having index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. Like this we can create the array and we can store the data. Indexes will play very important role when we are working with arrays. If you want to store the data or if you want to retrieve the data from the array, you need to use the index concept. Alright, now let us take a simple Java program on the array. Here I am creating one array with a size as 3. Integer array is equal to new int of 3. Now 
Whenever that line is executed, one array will be created with three indexes. As we discussed, index starts from 0, last index is size minus 1. Here size is 3, 3 minus 1, that is 2 is the last index. Alright, now I want to store some data into this array. As we told, uh, we can store multiple values into single variable. Now, we want to store multiple values into this array. Three indexes are available. We can store three values. How to store the data? ARR of 0 is equal to 100. I'm storing 100 value at the 0th index. Then 100 will be stored into 0th position here. Suppose if I want to store 101, array of 1 is equal to 101. 101 will be stored into first index. Array of 2 is equal to 102. I'm going to store 102 into second index. All right. If you try to store any other value, no, it's not possible because three indexes only available. We created array with the size as three. If I store array of three is equal to one or three, it will fail because the indexes is the indexes are only three. If you try to store or if you try to access the index which is not available in the array, then we will get array index out of bound exception. All right, here we have three indexes, so we can store three values. Next, how to access the values? Same, by using index, we can access the value also. Array of 0. If you access array of 0, in the 0th index, 100 is available. You will get 100 as output. If you access array of 1, 101 will be output because in the first index, 101 is available. If you access array of 2, 102 is available in the second index. We will get 102 as the output. All right, like this, we can create the array, we can initialize the array and we can retrieve the values also from the array. Let us see that programmatically. So here I have a class called a demo. I'm taking a main method which is used to run my Java program. Here I'm creating the array. Here I'm initializing the array. Here I'm trying to access the array values. Let's run this program. When I run this program, three values are there. I'm able to print those three values. For example, if I try to store some value at the array of index 3, array of index 3 is not available. Size I have given as 3, 0, 1, 2. So 2 is the last index. But I am trying to access array of 3. I am trying to store 1 or 3 at array of 3. Let us see the behavior. It will give exception. What is that exception? Array index out of bound exception we are getting array index out of bound exception we are getting because this index is not available so we should not take like this right when i'm trying to access 0 1 2 3 indexes are available i'm able to access these three indexes for example if i try to access if i try to access array of 3 then is that third index available not available then we are going to get array index out of bound exception so this line is also invalid this line will give array index out of bound exception. And remember, whenever we are creating the array, we need to give integer positive number. Suppose, for example, if I give minus 3, it is not going to accept it. It is saying that negative array size exception. Always we need to remember that the size of the array should be a positive number and that should be integer type only. If I take 5.5, .5, can I take a decimal value as a size of the array? Decimal value is not accepted. See, compilation only failed. Array size should be always a positive and integer type number. Decimal value not accepted. Negative number also not accepted. When we will get array index out of bound exception, if you try to access the index which is not available in the array, then we will get array index out of bound exception. All right. So with this, we are able to understand how to create one array how to initialize one array and how to access array values also based on the index. Next, now here we are creating array in two ways. In the approach one, in the line number eight, if you see, I'm creating array with size as a three and line number 10, 11, 12, I'm trying to initialize the array based on the index. I'm storing three names. Instead of doing like that, we can go for approach two also. In the single line, we are able to create the array and we are able to initialize. So approach one, approach two, both are same. In the approach one, we are first creating, then we are initializing. In the approach two, at the time of creation only, we are initializing the values directly. Both arrays are having size as a three. Good. Now, if I store the values into array, then how to traverse the array? 
how to access all the values from the array suppose if my array is having 100 values how can we traverse that array how can we retrieve the data from the array we can retrieve the data from the array in multiple ways right by using for loop you can access the elements from the array by using for each loop we can access the data from the array and in the java 1.8 streams concept introduced by using this stream also we can access the data from the array let us see that programmatically so here I am taking one array string names it is a string array I have stored three names in the approach one I am taking integer i is equal to 0 loop is starting from 0th index less than i less than names dot length here length is a property which will give you size of the array array size is 3 it will give names dot length as 3 i plus plus so here I am writing system dot out dot print ln of names of i first time i value will be 0 names of i it will give such an as a output then i value will be incremented names of 1 ganguly will be the output i value will be incremented names of 2 sehwag will be the output after that when the i value is incremented the condition is going to fail so it will come out from the loop by using this for loop we can print array elements in the forward direction similarly we can go for for each loop also string name colon names names is a array from this names array take each name and store into name variable and print it this is for each loop approach to then we are using third approach streams stream of names names is my array I'm passing array as the input to create this stream dot for each method name by using lambda expression I'm printing that name like this you can traverse the array in multiple ways for loop for each loop and by using string let me execute this program yes approach one we are able to see the data approach two we are able to see the data approach three we are able to see the data similarly can we traverse the array in the reverse order yes we can traverse the array in the reverse order also whenever we are traversing here I'm starting the index from zero if I want to traverse the array in the reverse order I need to start the index from here here to here so this for loop is printing the array from left to right forward direction I want to print array data in the backward direction how can we print array data in the backward direction by using this for loop we can print in the backward direction also let us see how can we print in the reverse order simple you need to take care of the loop for integer i is equal to I don't want to give 0 if I give 0 0 will represent first index I want to represent last index how to find out the last index of the array arrays dot array dot length length will give the size size is 3 but last index is size minus 1 so names dot length minus 1 it will give the last index of the array then I greater than or equal to 0 then I minus minus I'm initializing the I value as the last index of the array and for every iteration I'm decreasing that I value I'm decrementing that how many times I want to execute it if i value greater than or equal to 0 then my loop should execute if i value becomes a negative number i don't want to execute it because the last value will be 0th index let us print this values system dot out dot print ln names of i names of i let's execute it so here Sachin Ganguly Sehwag it is printing in the left to right direction but here if you see Sehwag Ganguly Sachin it is printing in the reverse order so like this you can write the loop to print the array data in the reverse order all right the data perfect next types of arrays we have two types of arrays guys first one is single dimensional array and the second one is multi-dimensional array single dimensional array will represent only one row and multi-dimensional arrays will represent rows and columns if you want to represent the data in the form of rows and columns then we can go for multi-dimensional array so let us see how to create multi-dimensional array so like this we can create multi-dimensional array row size and column size we can represent 0 of 0 0 of 1 1 of 0 and 1 of 1 so here it will represent the row and column index row and column index row and column index I'm trying to initialize this multi-dimensional array then I'm trying to iterate the array elements first time when I use this ARR ARR is a multi-dimensional array multi-dimensional array is nothing but a combination of array sub arrays will be available 
when i traverse first time i am getting some sub array when i traverse that sub array i am going to get the actual value so this is used to store the data into multi dimensional array and here i am printing the data from multi dimensional array so like this we are able to store the data and we are able to access the data remember that row size and column size whenever you are storing the data you need to keep that row size and column size properly all right next one in the interview arrays is the most favorite topic to ask the questions they will ask lot of coding challenges on the arrays guys what are the coding challenges they will ask in the arrays here i have given 10 number of questions on the arrays guys so in the next video i will discuss one by one of these coding challenges java program to find min and max elements in array java program to sort the array merge two arrays into single array java program to find missing number in the array java program to reverse an array without using second array java program to print duplicate elements in the array java program to print unique elements in the array how to sort an array of zeros and ones by using java program etc n number of coding challenges will be asked in the interview so you need to be very good with this logical programming on the arrays so if you like this video please subscribe and share this video in the next video we'll discuss on these coding challenges by using arrays until then bye bye thank you